Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador. I'd like to set up the Alpha 6100 camera for shooting with memorized groups of settings. These can be accessed from the top of the camera, the shoot mode dial. Just turn the shoot mode dial to the letters M, R, and then you'll be able to choose from one, two, or three on the uh, saved memories. First thing before we can recall the memories, however, we need to program them into the camera. Now, I've been using a system of uh, programming memories for portrait, action, and landscape. And I can pretty much start from any of those three uh, starting points and then make minor modifications as I'm choosing. But I find that I can switch the groups of settings really quickly by exercising this workflow. And I refer to this works, uh, workflow as PAL, Portrait, Action, Landscape. So first off, and we're going to turn the, uh, the shoot mode dial to aperture priority, which is the A on top of the shoot mode dial. And then we're going to go into the menu, pressing the menu button. Now you're going to need to choose whether you're going to be a RAW shooter or a JPEG shooter. So I'm shooting in RAW because I quite like processing my images in post-production software. And if this is something you don't really want to engage in, then just switch over to JPEG. If you're undecided, choose RAW and JPEG, and then you've got one image processed by the camera and another one that you could choose to process later. I'm going to leave it at RAW. Okay, so if you are a JPEG shooter, just set the JPEG quality to extra fine. Um, obviously, the standard or default is fine, but um, hey, it's a good camera. Why not get the best possible quality out of your new purchase? Now we're going to come over to the uh, second uh, camera menu and uh, we don't really need to choose anything from uh, these menus. Now if you're just taking one portrait and you're happy to press the shutter release once each time then single shooting is the most appropriate. If something is moving slightly you may want to uh, choose maybe not high this is really a sports mode but you might want to switch that to continuous shooting low this is about three frames per second so it'll give you the best possible expression uh, without having to keep on pressing the shutter release to take multiple images now we're just moving forward here. This is where we'll actually program the memory after we've finished setting up or choosing all of our settings, but we're not there yet. So we're going to have to come back to page four. We will recall the settings from the top of the shoot mode dial, but this is where we get to enter the settings. So let's move along and come back to this one later. Now I'm going to use continuous autofocus. I like people to be able to move or I like to move around while shooting and continuous autofocus is definitely the best one to have. Now IAF, which is the ability of the camera to pick focus on uh, somebody's eye if we're using very shallow depth of field uh, works well in continuous autofocus. The camera default is AFA and this is not so reliable. So let's switch that to AFC continuous autofocus and we'll come back into the into the menus. The focus area will be set to wide by default. Now what will happen if it is set to Y, let's just go to the default, which is Y, it'll tend to choose the person who is closest to the center of the frame and closest to the camera. Those are the algorithms that the camera loves to use. So if, however, you just want to uh, uh, highlight a person, maybe in a group, which may not be in the center, you may want to come down to one of the smaller focus areas, such as zone or one of the spot areas. Now, if you want to um, uh, start tracking somebody who may move to the edge of the frame, I might suggest choosing either tracking wide or tracking zone as your choice. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at tracking wide. Just remember, you might need to frame up the person so they're in the center of the frame. They can then move to the edge of the frame and the camera will track that person to the edge of the frame. So tracking wide is a more flexible version of just wide. And this is one of the major advantages of the Alpha 6100 over the 6000 is its ability to reliably track subjects around the frame. So we'll enter that to make my selection and return back to the menus.
Now the face IAF will be set on by default. Now if we are taking portraits of uh, animals we can actually change the subject detection from human to animal. Um, it can't uh, auto switch between the two. I would recommend putting this, um, this menu item into the FN menu or the function menu for quick changeability between humans and animals. So I'll leave that. I'll go, I'll hit the cancel button, which is the menu button and come back to the menus. We're going to leave the rest in their default settings and uh, come menu button one more time. The AF with shutter um, is on. So we focus and take the picture using the shutter release. Pre AF is on by default. Now I prefer to switch this off. If you are doing selfies, you're flipping the, uh, the, uh, the, the monitor up 180 degrees to take selfies, you might want to put that pre AF to the on position. But if you're taking portraits of other people, I would prefer to leave that in the off position. So we've got some uh, on, on page six, we're not going to use any of those menu items. We're not going to use anything on um, page seven, except just to note that face priority in multimetering is on, which is very good if your subject is backlit. The camera will still meter for the best exposure of the face. Now we'll just move over to page eight. Uh, you might want to use red eye reduction and switch that to on if you're using the pop-up flash but I'm not going to be using that. I prefer to use the natural ambient light and let the ISO go a little bit higher. White balance, we'll leave that on to auto. Uh, we'll leave uh, all of these settings as standard. If you're shooting people in very high contrast situations like bright sunlight with dark shadows, you may, if you're a JPEG shooter, want to lower the contrast. And to do that, we will just come in uh, cycle right using the right side of the control wheel and drop the contrast down. This will have no effect on the raw file. If you're a raw shooter, you would simply just raise the shadows slider in your raw editing software. So let's go back into the menus. You do have the option if you're a JPEG shooter um, to soften the skin. I find this is um, slightly unnatural. It might be more pleasing for uh, your general sitters who are not really meticulous about their skin complexions. Uh, but if you, you can actually do this uh, better in uh, post-production software. So we'll leave that one to off. And you're not going to be able to access this uh, anyway if you're a raw shooter. Coming over to page 10. If you were using uh, manual focus, you would want the focus assist on. Uh, so that when you turn the uh, the focus uh, ring on the lens, the camera will magnify the view so you can more easily fine tune the focus. But the IAF is so good on these cameras, we generally very rarely ever have to um, resort to MF assist. And face registration, if you are trying to pick out um, a face in a crowd of your friend or a family member, then you can register a face now and have the camera always looking and trying to find focus on that particular face. If you are doing selfies, the self-portrait timer is on. So coming over to the second, these are just movie settings, so we don't really need to go through any of these. Um, silent shooting, you only switch that on if you're using natural light and your subject is not moving quickly. Uh, we're going to leave the rest of the uh, um, settings on by default. Uh, these are greyed out, page 6. Again, nothing to change here. Uh, page uh, 7, auto review is on. I want to take a series of images and then pick the best one. I don't need to review them all as I'm taking them, so I'll switch that to off. And um, these are just uh, the way we can change the custom operation. If you did want to change one of the menu settings, for instance, so I, such as um, coming over and being able to change from animal to human or human to animal, we could do that by going into the function menu setting. This is where we can change between human and animal. Okay, so let's uh, come back to the menus. And um, we've got um, uh, audio signals. If uh, when you're focusing in single shooting, um, single AF mode, you might want to turn the signals off if the beeping is annoying you. So we've pretty much uh, set the camera up now. So now we're free to come and register those so we can access and recall them from the shoot mode dial. So let's just come over to our memory setting, which was on the page four. 
come down to memory and we'll just assign that to number one and so this is my portrait on number one and I'll just press the center button in the control wheel to enter those settings and they're registered now so I can now access all of those settings it doesn't matter what I've changed my settings to I can access all of those settings that are optimized for portraits um, from um, my uh, number one setting one of the settings that I didn't uh, actually record in there was the aperture value so let's just uh, go back um, into the menu here and just check we're actually set to f5.6 there now if I can uh, use a wider aperture I will actually want to do this now the maximum aperture on this uh, kit lens that I'm using is f3.5 at this focal length now if you've got um, a wider aperture lens such as the 50mm f1.8 I would actually encourage you to go to f2.8 or wider and then re-register these settings into the memory I actually when I'm shooting portraits of a single portrait I actually like the background to be as out of focus as possible often referred to as the bokeh it really makes the figures uh, stand out from the background and if you're familiar with like some smartphones that have portrait mode they're also trying to achieve this now we're achieving it in camera which is vastly superior to um, achieving it in post-production which is what the smartphones do so I'm going to set that to uh, my maximum aperture 3.5 if you want uh, even more um, a pop uh, background blur you are going to choose um, a lens with a wider aperture such as the uh, E16-55 to with a 2.8 constant aperture or maybe with one of the prime lenses uh, with a 1.8 now my favorite focal lengths for shooting portraits of a single person is actually to use um, a 50 mil focal length or something a little bit longer and uh, those give you a nice um, figure ground separation with no distortion of the facial features so let's just go back into the menus because we've made a modification to what we've registered so we need to go back into the memory and just enter that in over the top of our old settings basically we've just changed the maximum aperture uh, on this setting so we're now re-registering that you can't actually change the settings by using the shoot mode dial itself you can change settings but when you um, return away from number one and return to number one the defaults will be restored so they're really just starting points you are free to modify any of those start settings but you can always recall them and go back to the defaults by turning the shoot mode dial away from number one and back to number one and that is accessed through the MR setting on the shoot mode dial let's uh, set up the camera now for shooting action sports there's never just one setting for shooting action sports so it's um, it's a really good uh, group of camera settings to record to a memory so that if we're shooting a portrait or a landscape and then suddenly there's a burst of uh, fast moving action that we want to record instead of uh, trying to select the six or seven settings that we need to set up uh, we can just use uh, go over to the MR on the shoot mode dial and select our registered uh, group of settings uh, in this case I'm going to put it into number two uh, which forms my A of the PAL uh, portrait action landscape so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, change from uh, aperture priority over to shutter priority and then I'm going to change my um, default setting uh, of the shutter over to two thousandth of a second now this is going to freeze any rapidly moving subjects it's a good starting point if you want um, background blur behind your subject when you're panning you will slow this down and how much you slow it down is relative to how quickly you're panning the camera so for motorsports it might be uh, one two hundred and fiftieth or one five hundredth of a second but for somebody who's uh, jogging along or a slow moving bicycle you might want to choose something uh, quite uh, a lot slower like one thirtieth of a second or even slower so we start off at one two thousandth of a second because it's a great setting to freeze rapidly moving action we're now going to go into the menus now the file format now I am a raw shooter but you can only you record so many 
large raw files before the camera starts to slow down. So if you're wanting to shoot the longer sequences of action and not have the camera slow down and have the images you recorded write faster to the memory card, you're going to come down from raw to JPEG. I would still prefer to leave the JPEG quality at extra fine, but again, if you do uh, drop that down to five, you are going to be able to record more images to the, um, to the buffer and have those images write faster to the memory card. I'm gonna leave it at extra fine. You might find this gives you plenty of frames for recording quite long sequences of action. Now we're going to come across, and again, all of these uh, settings are appropriate. Um, for shooting fast moving action. Now the drive mode is going to be continuous shooting. Instead of uh, the low that we had for shooting um, portraits, we're gonna set that to high. Now remember high plus is the maximum frames per second. It's 11 frames per second, but we don't get a live finder view in order to pan accurately with a subject. So I prefer to use the high. It's still a, a fast frame rate. It's about eight frames per second. So I prefer to have that as my default setting. Remember we can modify after we start with our default settings by recalling them on the shoot mode dial. It's really just a starting setting that we're choosing here. And I'll enter that by pressing the uh, center button of the control wheel, and then go back into the menus. Now we'll move along to page four. This is where we'll enter them, but we've got a couple more settings to set up yet. So we'll come back to page four in a minute. The focus mode is continuous AF again. Now the focus area tracking is we're going to use wide. Now it will select the subject that's in the center of the frame that's closest to the camera when we start tracking. It does allow the subject to move to the edge of the frame. It doesn't have to stay in the center of the frame with this tracking mode. Uh, if you want to be, if you're trying to pick something out in a group of moving subjects, you might want to um, narrow the focus area down either to zone or maybe even really smaller if you've got lots of subjects and you're trying to pick out a player on a, on a soccer pitch in amongst other players, you might try and move right down to maybe flexible spot, expand flexible spot. Now it will require that you put that spot on the moving target. So that, uh, that can be a little bit tricky, but if the subjects aren't moving rapidly around the frame, you might find that you have more success with that. There is no one best focus area, but um, a reliable focus area to start with, I find, is tracking wide. So we'll enter that in and then go back into the menus. Now you do want, um, uh, I prefer to have the focusing link to the shutter release, so I'll leave that to on. I'm not a back button AF user. If you are, you'll need to switch that to off. And the pre-AF, which is on by default on these cameras, which is great for selfies, maybe movies, but not good for shooting sports. So that does need to be off um, by default for shooting. Um, now we've got nothing to adjust on this uh, page and um, we've got nothing to adjust on this page either. We will be using ISO auto. Okay, we're, we're going to let the ISO jump. Now, the only problems we're going to have with this is if we're shooting fast moving action with one two thousandth of a second in low ambient light, the, um, the uh, ISO is going to be very high. So you may need to lower that shutter speed when we're photographing in uh, low ambient light to prevent the ISO from climbing too high. The metering is going to be set to multi again, and uh, we're not using any flash. And um, again, white balance, uh, auto, and uh, the um, DRO, we can leave that set to auto as well. Creative style, you may want to drop that if you're shooting in very high contrast conditions, if you're a JPEG shooter. So we'll come back out of that. And uh, just moving along the menus, uh, nothing to select in focus assist uh, uh, or shooting assist. We will have, um, uh, the IAF on in the focus menu because we might be able to pick up an eye of our moving subject and that might help. Okay, so we're on to the second uh, camera menu. So movie one, movie two, movie three, we're setting up stills so we can bypass these. 
Um, silent shooting, you don't want to use silent shooting for shooting rapidly moving subjects, so that should be off. E front curtain shutter, you're going to get a faster frame rate with that uh, on, so we're going to make that sure that's still at the default. Okay, head over to page 7 and just make sure your auto review is switched to off, and then head back over to camera setup 1, page 4, and then enter the memory and add that to memory 2. Okay, now we're ready to freeze fast moving action. So let's uh, set up the third of our memory settings, which is the landscape. That's the PAL, Portrait Action Landscape. So landscape will be on the number three position of the MR Recall um, uh, registered settings. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move from the shutter priority to aperture priority on the shoot mode dial because depth of field is our priority here. We'll just press the C1 key and come from continuous AF into AF uh, S, which is single shot AF. And we'll just uh, press the uh, enter button to enter that. We'll press the left side of the control wheel on the back of the camera to enter the drive mode to select single shooting. We're now free to um, choose an aperture and I'm going to choose an aperture um, by rolling the uh, uh, control wheel uh, to F8. Now this is a good starting point. It'll give you plenty of depth of field for 90% of the time. If you do find yourself very close to some foreground subject matter, maybe a piece of driftwood on the beach that you want to be in focus as well as the distant mountains, uh, or you're working with a slightly longer focal length lens, a lot of landscape is done with wide or ultra wide lenses, but if you're using a standard focal length, maybe 35 millimeters or longer, you may want to uh, come down to F11. Now I'm just going to register F8 as my starting point and we'll go from there. We're now free to go into the menus. Let's just cycle back to um, uh, page one. Okay, file format. If you have been shooting JPEGs for sport, uh, I would encourage you, if you are comfortable editing raw files, moving from JPEG to raw. This gives you more flexibility about editing more aggressively when we need to bring highlights down and shadows up when our uh, landscapes are very high in contrast, which is typical when we're shooting into the sun. Okay, so let's move over and uh, change the color space if we have been shooting in sRGB to share images to the internet but now we're more interested in printing our images you'll switch from sRGB to Adobe RGB if you do want to share these images with to the internet and social media it just use um, convert them in post-production software to sRGB if that all sounds too complicated just leave it at sRGB and uh, we'll move over to uh, uh, page three, drive mode we've already selected on the um, left side of the control wheel. We've set up our bracket settings um, so that if we uh, do need to bracket images, we'll use a two second timer delay. We'll go back into the menus. Um, page four, this is where we'll register it eventually when we come back. Focus mode we've already changed um, by pressing the C1 key. Um, the focus area. Now, typically I will change the focus area from like a wide or a tracking wide into an expand flexible spot. And I'll move that flexible spot from the center of the frame down towards the lower portion. This is typically where my foreground information is. I don't want to be focusing on the distance. If I'm going to get the maximum depth of field, I'll photograph on something that is closer to the camera. Now, I'll, this will be my starting point. What we'll need to do is we'll set up a custom key, uh, which will be the center button, so we can move this. When I press the center button, it's going to get locked down in position. Now, I don't want to have to come back into the menus to change that, so I'm going to assign a custom key at the end of this configuration. But we'll come back into the menus, and uh, we don't need to do anything there, except make sure pre F is still in the off position, and we don't need to make any changes to page 6, um, or perhaps even uh, 7. If you, you are shooting landscapes and you're predominantly using a tripod, I would encourage you to choose from ISO Auto down to 100 ISO, which is the optimum ISO for low noise. Now you will need to set a two second delay or use a remote release 
if using extended shutter speeds. Okay, we'll come back out. I'll leave mine at IS Auto. I'm setting this up for handheld landscape. So ISO Auto will be my friend in this instance. And uh, flash mode, we're not gonna be using flash for landscape. Uh, white balance, if you are a JPEG shooter, you might just want to modify your DRO or creative styles. We can lighten the shadows if we decide to come from DRO Auto into LV3 or higher. We will get lighter shadows uh, as we're capturing them. It will not affect the raw files. I'm going to leave that back at uh, DRO Auto uh, because I'm a raw shooter. Uh, creative style, I'll leave it standard. Okay, so um, we might be using focus magnifier if we're using manual focus with landscape. Um, so I'm going to leave that uh, switch to on and shooting assist. Uh, we don't need anything from this menu. Uh, the following menus are all to do with movies, so we can bypass these. Um, steady shot, um, you might want to switch that off if you're doing very long exposures with telephoto lenses. If you're using Sony lenses and their wide angle or standard focal length, it's okay really to leave this on. It doesn't tend to have a huge effect. Okay, so um, let's moving over, um, grayed out. Um, we're um, basically uh, just working with the standard settings on all of these. Uh, auto review, we don't really need on either. And uh, this is where we can assign a custom key. And we're going to assign a custom key to that center button. Now it's programmed for IAF. IAF is pretty much on all of the time anyway. So we can um, decide to override that. And what I'm going to be looking for is, uh, is a focus mode and it's called focus standard. Okay, if I've, uh, I'll just come out and show you that now, is if I press the center button, I can move that focus point around the screen using that control wheel. And then when I've got it into position on my foreground subject matter, just press the center button again and it gets locked into position. So this is my preferred um, a custom key for that center button. I can always assign uh, another key to IAF. Typically, um, I might assign the focus hold button on the lens to IAF if I'm using one of the um, uh, Sony lenses that does have a focus hold button. Let's go back to the menus. We're pretty much ready to um, assign this to a memory. So we'll just go back to uh, camera setup one, page four, uh, set over to memory and then sign that to number three. So this is my portrait, action, and landscape memory settings all set up on this camera. Now I, don't, I can dispense with uh, using the aperture priority and shutter priority on the shoot mode dial. I can simply roll my shoot mode dial down to the MR and then select whether I want to shoot landscapes um, or my action settings or my portrait settings. And I can shoot 95% of everything that I do by using one of these three starting points. So let's switch from the landscape to portraits for isolating subjects with shallow depth of field. Okay, hopefully you've uh, found that uh, useful. Remember to head over to my website, www.markgaylor.com. All of my learning resources for the Sony Alpha community are free. Uh, if they are, if you found them very, very useful, just consider making a small donation through one of the PayPal links. And um, subscribe to the channel uh, so that you can get all of the latest movies, whether I'm reviewing cameras, lenses, or giving useful tips for uh, using your camera and getting the best out of your purchase. I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Imaging Ambassador.